This is a short video about gradient or slope and, and how we measure it in mathematics. I'm going to start off with something which isn't very steep, and that is Melbourne Airport. OK, let's go there, see how fast we can fly to Melbourne. Pretty good. OK, here's the runway, here's the main runway. It sort of faces uh, nearly due north-south, but not quite. I'm going to use these tools up here. Now, this is the one for putting uh, individual points on, place marks. This is the one for doing polygons, but the one I wanted to use is add a path. In this case, the path is going to be called runway. Don't close it yet, because we haven't put the path on. So here's the path tool. I'm going to go click here and click here. And I could do more clicks, and I'll do that in a moment with another situation. I've already set the style and the width to be 4 so that it's more visible. It comes much thinner than that. So you press OK and what happens is that it gets added to the list here. Runway. Now there's a really nice little feature. If you right click now, ah, it's just off the bottom, so I'm just going to move this up a bit so you can see, never mind the Melbourne ads for parking. And now go Runway and Show Elevation Profile. That's one of Google's little genius moves here. And what it's done is that it gives you a cross-section of the path, well, it's easy, a straight line, and the altitude. So it starts at 134 metres above sea level, and as the plane lands, it seems to be going downhill. So you could certainly introduce this idea to your class and say, look, is that steep? Is it too steep? Is it dangerously steep for airplanes to land and take off? What about that bump halfway down? Um, and hopefully somebody will notice, well, it's a drop of 134 to 103, so that's 31 metres, in what? 3,500 metres. So it's not a very big drop considering the length of the runway. Another nice little thing you can do here is you can use this tool here to play a tour. And you can actually fly down the runway. And while we're doing so, we'll have a look at 16. That's the runway number. That means it's 160 degrees from magnetic north in direction. And we can fly. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't tie in with this. You have to move this by hand, which is a shame. I know that that will come later on. Um, and you can see that this is a quite entertaining way to look down your path. So let's go look at somewhere else that is a bit more steep. And I'm going to go to the North England town of Bolton now. Let's see what we can find there, because I know that's quite hilly. Uh, and just see what route we took. But there it is. There's Bolton. Uh, fantastic. Now, I happen to know that up here, uh, there's a school. And uh, if I go down, here it is. So let's suppose we're doing our, our path to school by one of the students who's perhaps on his bicycle. Uh, let's assume the student lives up here by the lake. OK, so first of all, I'll turn that off and turn that off. So I can now use my tool. And here it is, the path tool. And we're going to call this um, route to school. OK, so supposing he lives in the house here next to the lake, so I'm going to go click here and click here and here and here. If you move the arrow keys now, it does actually move the whole scene up and down, which is quite useful. So I'm now going to continue in our mode, and the school is at the left here. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit more because I'd like to get a bit more detail. I can see that we need to turn right at this point and go up this road. Sharples Park and then into the school. There we go. So there is our path. Now you might uh, discuss this with your students. You know, is, is it a steep route? But now if we press OK down here we get our route to school. Right click, show elevation profile. And there you can see that it's actually a good downhill run to school and you can discuss all individual gradients and so on on the way. So how does this all work out in the classroom when we're talking about gradient and slope and so on? So I'm just going to open up Autograph to have a look at this in a graphing environment. I use the standard level because that has equal aspect as a default. So here we have a, a 2D page and I'm going to look at the gradient from two points of view. First of all, um, putting a point here and say a point here. And selecting those two, I can right click, I can have a look at gradient. Now, gradient is defined as the change in y divided by the change in x. If you actually select it, you can show the value of it, and in this case it is a gradient of a half. Well, what happens if we change these points dynamically? We can move it up to here and watch the gradient take different values until eventually, of course, it's infinite. And then the idea of negative gradient. Looking at it from a, a point of view of a straight line, if I enter an equation 
at y equals x, from which all other straight lines must be related. And there it goes, it's at 45 degrees. And I'm now going to put in y equals mx. Now m takes an initial value of 1 in this program, so we'll, we'll do that, and then that's going to plot right on top of the other one. I'm going to open the constant controller now and see what happens if we vary m. Now if I press this button, m will become 2 because the step's 1, so that's going to go up to 2. What will happen to the graph? Well, it's going to have a gradient of 2, which means 1 along and 2 up, so it's going to go through this point here. Let's see if it does. Yes, and if I make it 3, it's simply going to move up to this point. So you get this idea that, that a point is just going to go up and down if its x value is 1. So what I'm going to do now is select this line and enter a point on it at a value of 1. And if I also put a point at the origin, I can select both of those and right-click to the gradient. I'll just edit select all scribbles and get rid of those. There we go. So now we change M. If we make M4, it's just going up and up and up and up and up and up and down and down and down and down and down. So it goes to 1 and then we could reduce the step and have a look and see what happens at decimal values until eventually it's 0 and then it goes negative. So there's no chance of it ever going all the way over the top. It simply goes up and down this vertical line. What about this gradient of the runway? Let's have a look at this. So here, I think if I recall right, it was about 31 in vertical divided by 3 to 1,500 horizontal. So that will be the slope. If I press enter, there it goes. So here is our runway at Melbourne uh, in a graphing environment. And there it goes. You can see that it is certainly not that steep, but if you put a marble at one end, it would roll down uh, quite comfortably. So that's a look at Gradient using uh, Autograph and also our old friend Google Earth.